Kirsten Northfield and I work for Washington State University and I manage the diagnostic lab. In video one, we went over how to send me your sample properly so that I can do the tests. And in video two, which is this video, we're going to go over each individual test that we do here in the lab. The test that we do is a detection test for viral mites. So when I get your sample, I put it in a series of tubes that have been cut in half. And then I fill it halfway with alcohol, right over the alcohol that's already been in your sample that you've sent. And then we have a shaker here that we're going to put our tubes in, set the timer for an hour, and then turn it on. So our Varroa test has been running for about an hour now, so it can be taken out. We can unscrew the bottom of the bottle, which has a mesh filter in it to keep the bees in the bottle. And all the alcohol will come out with the Varroa mites in the sample. At this point, we will collect all the Varroa mites and put it in a subsample so we can keep it for further testing if we want to do genetic testing and we label it and put it in the freezer. And now we're ready to count bees. So our bees have been sitting here in the tube. We're just going to scoop them out and we're going to count every bee. And we do that, we count the mites and the bees so that we can do um, our analysis and send you accurate data. I'm going to put the bees right back into the same bottle. And now that we have the bees saved back in the sample bottle, we're going to want to fill it up with clean alcohol. And we label the bottle to say that we've completed our Varroa test, and we move on to the next test. Now that we've done our Varroa test, we're going to be doing our tracheal test next to detect tracheal mites. So what we'll do is take out 30 bees, um, and we calculate by percentage of bees infested. We take out 30 bees because if we find more than five bees infested, then we're going to dissect 30 bees. So right now we're holding on to the bee with our forceps, and I'm going to dissect a tracheal tube. So there I'm putting it down, and it is infested. These are some great examples of tracheal tubes that have been infested. You can see by the black marks and some of the scar tissue at the ends. Um, indicate that it has been infested. So these tracheal tubes are not in good shape. This tube is an example of a highly infested tube with eggs inside. So you can see those little white oval shapes. Those are eggs. So we've laid it on the thorax of the bee so you can get a good look at it. Um, so sometimes we find tubes like that in addition to the tubes that just have the scar tissue like we saw before. These are actively infested tubes. Okay, so now that we've done our Varroa and tracheal tests, we're going to move on to Nosema. And so for this test, we need 50 bees. And as I said in video one, we need half a cup to more preferably a whole cup of bees because these, um, this Nosema test takes so many bees as well as the Varroa, but we need to be able to save enough bees when we're done so that we can do another Nosema test if we need to. But so as I said, we need 50 abdomens. So we're going to pull them off the bees. So now we have our 50 abdomens off of the bees. So at this point, we're going to put 10 mils of water into the mix. So, and this is distilled water. Okay. We pour it in with the abdomens. And we're going to crush the abdomens into a paste. So now that the bee abdomens are in a paste, we're going to um, wash off the wand with 15 mils of distilled water. We're just going to wash it off into the mix. Our next step is to filter the liquid into a beaker. So we just take a regular nylon filter. And as you can see, there's still a little bit of residue left. Add 25 mils of distilled water and rinse it around so that we can get off this leftover residue. So we're going to kind of shake it around, get everything off, and pour it in with the rest. Now that will total 
50 mils of distilled water, and we do that because we're doing one mil of distilled water per bee. And as I said in the beginning, we took off 50 abdomens, so at this point we have 50 mils to match the 50 abdomens. And then we have this paste. So this is what our abdomens are going to look like, and this is what we're going to work with for the rest of the test. And we're going to pour it into our labeled centrifuge tube. Shake it up a little, mix up the residue, okay, so now it's ready to go. This next step, we will be putting it into the centrifuge, um, and what we're going to do is put in our samples. We're going to shut the centrifuge and set it at 1.3 RPMs, so we have our digital here in 3 minutes and 15 seconds. So this is the perfect speed. Push the green arrow and it will spin. And what it's doing right now um, is being suspended so that in the end all the junk that we don't want will be at the top and we can pour it out. So now the centrifuge has stopped spinning. Now we can open it up quite loud and we take out our sample. So as I was saying before, all this excess liquid that we don't want, we're going to just pour down the sink. And we have this pellet here at the bottom, and that's what we're going to continue to work with. So as you see, our pellet is left here in the bottom, and that's what we want. That's what we want to work with. So at this point, we're going to add 50 mils of distilled water, clean distilled water, back into it. We're going to carefully pour it in because this is now going to be really, really close to overflowing. ready to be mixed up and ready to go on the scope. So the next thing we're going to do now that we have our mixture all ready um, and we've added the 50 mils distilled water back into it is we're going to pipette our sample mixture. So we just stick the pipette inside and mix it up so that pellet's going to come right apart. So we're going to take one mil out of the mix with our pipette and place it into a sterile 1.5 mil microcentrifuge tube. And the reason that we do this is because later we may do PCR DNA analysis on the sample. So we want to put it in the freezer, have it labeled, and be able to do that if we want to in the future. And while this is still shaking, take the liquid and place it on the hemocytometer which is a slide with a grid on it. So these are some spores that I've laid out on the hemocytometer grid like we were talking about earlier. And this is a highly infested sample. So we don't want to see these, but um, those are spores sticking to the grid. This is another sample that's highly infested. And you can see the spore is very apparent there in an oval shape. This is a sample that's very infested. This shot was taken with an electron microscope, and you can see the nosema spores, which are those oval shapes there, stuck to a piece of debris within a bee. So you've seen what we do here in the diagnostic lab. Um, as you can see, it's quite extensive and time consuming, and the reason for that is that we want your data to be as accurate as possible. Um, so in saying that, the turnover time for your receiving data for your samples is about two to three weeks, but that of course is depending on the workload that we have because I process samples in first come first serve. So um, like I said, it will be two to three weeks, sometimes longer, sometimes quicker, depending on the load that we have. And um, yeah, I look forward to seeing your samples. Thank you for watching.